What's good? Brian Tong here and welcome to Googlelicious for everything Google that we can pack inside of a show. Now the first virtual reality headset at an affordable price is out after Samsung's Oculus powered Gear VR headset was recently made available online for only $200 through Samsung's website and AT&T. It's called the Innovator Edition and it pairs with the Galaxy Note 4, but it's targeted specifically to developers or early adopters, so this is nowhere close to being a polished product with a truckload of apps to support it. Now, Samsung showcased the Gear VR earlier this year at a Samsung event, and sure, it's something we're checking out, but uh, I wouldn't put it at the top of your Christmas list. And I really think the best part of this is the fact that it's at a price point that won't freak out early adopters, even if you have to have a Note 4 to use it. All right, looking to the future of phones, after rumors that Qualcomm's next Snapdragon 810 chip was facing production issues, the chip maker said everything is on track and devices supporting the new octa-core chip will still be available in the first half of 2015. Phones like the LG G4 and the Xperia Z4 are expected to be on that list and so is the Galaxy S6. Now, the Snapdragon 810 will finally allow devices to take advantage of the 64-bit support in Android 5.0 Lollipop as well. And since we're talking about the Galaxy S6, the purported detailed specs of the S6 have appeared on OnTutu's benchmark with the model number SMG925F, which is the model number of the European version of Samsung's next smartphone. Now, you can see Samsung's 64-bit octa-core, which is a Snapdragon 810, a 1440 by 5.5-inch screen, a 20-megapixel rear camera, 5-megapixel front-facing, 3 gigs of RAM, and 32 gigs of storage. Now, we'll most likely see this phone announced with other flagship phones at Mobile World Congress in Barcelona following CES 2015. All right, Google has released Android Studio 1.0. It's their first stable version of their integrated development environment aimed at Android developers that you can download from their developer site right now. Its aim is to make life for developers faster and easier with tools like editing your Android layouts across multiple screen sizes at once and performance tools that show the memory usage of your app. And HTC users still waiting for any signs of the sweetness of Lollipop? The rollout for the HTC One M8 and M7 Google Play editions is out right now, so get on it. But if your HTC One is on Verizon like me, you gotta keep waiting. And you'll be seeing this rolling out soon on websites. I'm sure you're all tired of having to type in those impossible to read CAPTCHA phrases on websites to confirm you're actually a person instead of a bot. Well, Google recently launched what they're calling the reCAPTCHA, and with a single click, you can confirm that you are a human. It's just a better user experience and still protects the actual website from spam and abuse and fights against bots. Because honestly, do you still want to try to figure these out? And then you want to punch your computer after the fifth time? I mean, these are just real issues because I know how you feel when you're trying to get tickets for the matinee showing for the Frozen sing-along version. So I've heard. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can always email us at googlelicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time for some more of that Googlelicious. Googlelicious.